Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode here at Wildman Lives. I'm your host, Wildman. Now on today's episode, I thought that I would do an entire video dedicated to deadlift grip. Now if you saw my last video, which was the good, the bad, and the ugly about the deadlift, I went over the four basic grips that you can take with a deadlift, but I didn't talk too much about it because I really wanted to get to whether or not you should or should not program deadlifts into your daily workouts. So for this video, I wanted to dedicate the time and take the effort to really explain the deadlift grips and some of the benefits and some of the cons that come with doing a certain kind of grip. So here we go. Now, the first thing you need to know is that there's basically four grips that are the most popular to do with a deadlift. The first one is called the overhand grip. The second one is called the hook grip. The third one is called the mix grip. And it's not really necessarily a grip for the last one, but the most popular uh, grip that people like to take is really no grip at all, which is using straps or some type of lifting device to help you with the lift. So I'll start with the overhand grip. Now the overhand grip is probably the most popular grip when it comes to doing the deadlift. All you have to do is bend down and grab the bar which is typically with your palm, then your fingers wrap around the barbell, and then your thumb goes over the top of your fingers. This is the kind of grip that you'll see the most in commercial gyms and pretty much around average gym goers. I'd say about 90% of the lifting population actually uses the overhand grip. And the reason why they do that is because they think that the deadlift not only should work your back, but it's also a grip exercise and this is true if you have a very strong grip you'll be able to deadlift for reps or even one rep max a pretty good fair amount of weight alone just by having really good grip but eventually your muscles are going to be stronger than your grip and your grip is going to become what is called commonly in the fitness industry as the limiting factor barbells are thin in diameter and want to roll towards the path of least resistance if your hand is in an overhand grip, then that's going to be towards your thumbs. And since your thumbs are on the outside of your fingers, it's going to be very difficult for your thumbs to not want to break away when the weight gets very heavy. So the problem is you could still lift and have a lot more in the tank to lift a deadlift, but it's your grip that's going to make it so that you can't achieve that possible weight that you're trying to get to. Now there's a very good fix to this and it's very simple. And that leads us to our second grip, which is called the hook grip. Basically, all you have to do is instead of placing your thumbs on the outside of your fingers, you would place the thumb on the inside of the bar, and then you would wrap your fingers over your thumb. This fixes the path of least resistance because now when that bar starts to roll towards your thumbs in the direction that it wants to go when it gets heavy, it's going to run into your thumbs but your thumbs are going to have the extra support of your fingers wrapped around your thumb that it should not go anywhere. Now you're probably thinking this sounds very painful. And to tell you the truth, it is in the beginning. If you're not used to this, you're actually going to feel like that you're breaking your thumb. No joke. Every time I used to train with hook grip when I haven't, A, when I was trying to learn how to do hook grip and B, when I haven't done hook grip in a while and I want to go back to it, my thumbs are screaming at me and I do feel like that they're going to snap off. I promise you that you're not going to snap off your thumb. And if you are concerned about that, then there are plenty of hook grip tutorials out there on YouTube that you could check out that might make it a little bit more comfortable. They also sell implements for your thumbs. Like you can wrap your thumbs with tape or you could use uh, some type of rubber guard to protect your thumbs. For me, I never use any of those because eventually you'll develop a callus on your thumb like I did and that will protect your thumb and not make it feel like it wants to snap in half. Just like how you have calluses on your hands as you lift more frequently, the same thing goes with the hook grip. Eventually you'll start developing a callus on your thumb and that too will be able to protect your thumb and not make it feel like it's very sensitive in that region. Now, although that's a very simple solution, just put the thumb on the inside and sit on the outside, it doesn't carry over very well to other lifting implements that are in the variation realm of the deadlift, such as the axle bar. 
The axle bar is very thick in diameter, almost about as thick as a Coke can. And you're not gonna be able to get your fingers and your thumbs completely around that bar. So it's gonna make it impossible to do a hook grip. Same thing with a trap bar. Just because you're in a neutral position, it doesn't gonna really carry over that well into grip. Now this leads to the third most famous deadlift grip variation, which is called the mixed grip. Now the mixed grip is also a very simple concept. Instead of doing an overhand grip where both hands are pronated, instead you would use one of your hands, you can pick your right or your left, doesn't really matter, and then you would underhand that. This is called supinated. Now what happens is when the bar in your overhand starts to want to roll towards the path of least resistance, it's going to roll into your underhand, which is going to be the strong part of your hand. So then it's going to roll the bar back the other way towards the path of least resistance, which is going to be towards the thumb. But then it's going to go into your overhand grip, and that's going to be the strongest part of your hand. This makes this a very secure grip. And yeah, you can actually get, because of the shoulder placement, when you do one hand underhand, you're gonna be able to be a lot more upright. So a lot of people actually find that it actually increases their deadlift better than a hook grip. Another fun thing about it is it carries over into other lifts. If you're gonna use an axle bar, you can use the mixed grip. And yes, because the axle bar is thicker in diameter, it's definitely not gonna be the same as doing a barbell. Barbells are definitely gonna be easier to lift. However, you still can use a mixed grip and get more weight out of it than doing an overhand grip, since you can't use a hook grip on that implement. Now there's two downsides to using the mixed grip. The first is your hand that is supinated or underhand, whichever hand you choose, it's going to expose a very fragile bicep tendon that attaches the bottom of your bicep to your elbow. It's pretty common that that bicep tendon actually ruptures under a tremendous amount of weight. If both hands are in the overhand position, that bicep tendon is tucked safely away and is not being exposed during the lift and you're not putting very much weight on it. Versus the underhand position is going to increase the likelihood of rupturing that bicep because you're exposing it and you're introducing it to a tremendous amount of weight. Another reason that people don't really like to use the mixed grip either is because of the muscular imbalance that it causes. Because if you think about it, one shoulder is overhand and the other shoulder is underhand. And that's gonna cause a muscular imbalance between the two. Most mixed grippers say, well, then I'll just switch hands. But anybody who's been lifting long enough knows that you can't just switch hands. That's like saying, I'm gonna, instead of throwing a fastball with my dominant hand, now I'm gonna throw a fastball and I'm gonna pitch in baseball with my recessive hand, which doesn't make any sense. If you're going to compete and you're gonna train a certain way, you gotta train in that style and in that technique every single time. Otherwise, you're just not gonna get better. This also causes your shoulders to be not very symmetrical. And you'll see when I do farmer walks and I've been doing mixed grip all year round, when I start to carry the farmer walks, it makes my head kind of look a little wonky and a little screw. And that's because of the muscular imbalance. So this is why often mixed grip isn't the first choice when it comes to grip. Now, the last grip that you can take is using straps or other variants. Now, I don't want to get into the weeds about straps because there's a lot of straps out there that are available. So I just want to talk about the most popular two straps that I've personally seen. The first is the common straps that you see when you just type in on Amazon deadlift straps. You're usually going to get straps like these. Now, essentially all you have to do is you just bend down and you wrap the strap around the bar and then your hands hold those straps together. Now what happens is as the bar goes up and it wants to go into the path of least resistance, it's not going to be able to because the straps and your hand on top of it while it's wrapped is going to hold it there and it's going to roll it back the other way. But when it rolls back the other way, the base of the strap that's around your wrist is going to catch it and roll it back the other way. And so you're going to be evenly balanced. The second strap I'll talk about, and I've seen a lot, are called figure eight straps. Now, the reason why these are so popular is because you don't have to spend a lot of time at the bottom of the lift and psyching yourself out, especially when it gets heavy or you're going to do it for reps and it's going to be more reps than you've ever done before. Figure eight straps go on the bar very, very easy. All you have to do is just leave one on your wrist, wrap the other one around the bar and slide your wrist through. It's really easy to do. 
And because of its simplicity, that's why a lot of people like to use figure eight straps. However, just as the case in any sport, strong men have really screwed this up because they kind of figured out that you don't even need to put your hands on the straps. You could just make a fist or you can even get longer figure eight straps where that can actually take like an inch off from the bar and your fingertips can just be touching the bar. This has caused a lot of controversy in the strongman community. And so a lot of, I mean, all of the elite shows that do strongman and half of the amateur shows actually ban figure eight straps for this reason. So if you're planning to compete in a strongman show, I would just get used to having the regular deadlift straps that I showed previously because those are allowed in competition pretty much from the elite level all the way down. So if you train like that and you get used to those, then you'll be perfectly fine and ready for it when it comes to competition versus if you use figure eight straps or some other variation of, this, of these straps. And then when you get to competition, they say, well, you can't use those. And then now you're fumbling on the bottom and you haven't trained with these implements. And now you're not gonna be able to hit the weight that you wanted to and what you were training to hit. Plus with the deadlift straps that strongmen typically use, you are using some grip. Versus with the figure eight straps, you're not using any grip at all, essentially. You're just letting your arms be ropes. So there is some benefit to using straps in that manner. So there you go. Those are the four different kinds of grips that you can take when doing a deadlift. In my opinion, all of these grips are very important and it's good to be efficient in some aspects because I've had it where in a competition, my straps actually snapped and then it was on an axle and I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And the best thing to do is, you know, switch to a mixed grip and just start keeping the competition and stay in the game. But every once in a while, I like to go back and do the overhand grip just to see how my grip is progressing as I do a lot of grip exercises, such as farmer walks and pull-ups. And so I like to see and test if my grip is strong enough. And every once in a while, I'll try the hook grip just to kind of see if I can withstand the pain or not. I hope everybody appreciated this video and I will see you next time. Thanks.